men neglect the duties incumbent on man, yet are treated like demigods. Religion is also separated from morality by a ceremonial veil, yet men wonder that the world is almost, literally speaking, a den of sharpers or oppressors. I do not wish women to have power over men, but over themselves. A king is always a king, and a woman always a woman, his authority and her sex ever stand between them and rational converse. No man chooses evil because it's evil. He only mistakes it for happiness, the good he seeks. Some women govern their husbands without degrading themselves, because intellect will always govern. To improve both sexes they ought, not only in private families, but in public schools, to be educated together. If marriage be the cement of society, mankind should all be educated after the same model, or the intercourse of the sexes will never deserve the name of fellowship. Strengthen the female mind by enlarging it, and there will be an end to blind obedience. The two sexes mutually corrupt and improve each other. The more equality there is established among men, the more virtue and happiness will reign in society. The beginning is always today. It is vain to expect virtue from women till they are in some degree independent of men. Only that education deserves emphatically to be termed cultivation of the mind which teaches young people how to begin to think. Let woman share the rights and she will emulate the virtues of man, for she must grow more perfect when emancipated. Good habits, imperceptibly fixed, are far preferable to the precepts of reason. Women do not want power over men, they want power over themselves. Taught from infancy that beauty is woman's scepter, the mind shapes itself to the body, and roaming round its gilt cage, only seeks to adorn its prison. I love man as my fellow, but his scepter, real, or usurped, extends not to me, unless the reason of an individual demands my homage, and even then the submission is to reason, and not to man. Women are systematically degraded by receiving the trivial attentions which men think it manly to pay to the sex, when, in fact, men are insultingly supporting their own superiority. If we revert to history, we shall find that the women who have distinguished themselves have neither been the most beautiful nor the most gentle of their sex. Men and women must be educated, in a great degree, by the opinions and manners of the society they live in. To be a good mother, a woman must have sense, and that independence of mind which few women possess who are taught to depend entirely on their husbands. Meek wives are, in general, foolish mothers, wanting their children to love them best, and take their part, in secret, against the father, who is held up as a scarecrow. My own sex, I hope, will excuse me, if I treat them like rational creatures, instead of flattering their fascinating graces, and viewing them as if they were in a state of perpetual childhood. Unable to stand alone. Make women rational creatures, and free citizens, and they will quickly become good wives, that is, if men do not neglect the duties of husbands and fathers. We never do anything well, unless we love it for its own sake. The appetites will rule if the mind is vacant. Till women are more rationally educated, the progress in human virtue and improvement in knowledge must receive continual checks. True happiness must arise from well-regulated affections, and an affection includes a duty. Friendship is a serious affection, the most sublime of all affections, because it is founded on principle, and cemented by time. We cannot, without depraving our minds, endeavor to please a lover or husband, but in proportion as he pleases us. The divine right of husbands, like the divine right of kings, may, it is hoped, in this enlightened age, be contested without danger. When poverty is more disgraceful than even vice, 
is not morality cut to the quick. Age demands respect, youth, love. When a man seduces a woman, it should, I think, be termed a left-handed marriage. Weakness may excite tenderness, and gratify the arrogant pride of man, but the lordly caresses of a protector will not gratify a noble mind that pants for, and deserves to be respected. Fondness is a poor substitute for friendship. And this homage to women's attractions has distorted their understanding to such an extent that almost all the civilized women of the present century are anxious only to inspire love. When they ought to have the nobler aim of getting respect for their abilities and virtues. When any prevailing prejudice is attacked, the wise will consider, and leave the narrow-minded to rail with thoughtless vehemence at innovation. Women all want to be ladies, which is simply to have nothing to do, but listlessly to go they scarcely care where, for they cannot tell what. Make them free, and they will quickly become wise and virtuous, as men become more so. For the improvement must be mutual, or the injustice which one half of the human race are obliged to submit to, retorting on their oppressors. The virtue of men will be worm-eaten by the insect whom he keeps under his feet. I begin to love this little creature, and to anticipate his birth as a fresh twist to a knot, which I do not wish to untie. The last man. Yes I may well describe that solitary being's feelings, feeling myself as the last relic of a beloved race, my companions extinct before me. Women are degraded by the propensity to enjoy the present moment, and, at last, despise the freedom which they have not sufficient virtue to struggle to attain. The most perfect education is such an exercise of the understanding as is best calculated to strengthen the body and form the heart. Or, in other words, to enable the individual to attain such habits of virtue as will render it independent. When man, governed by reasonable laws, enjoys his natural freedom, let him despise woman, if she do not share it with him. As a sex, women are habitually indolent, and everything tends to make them so. Why is our fancy to be appalled by terrific perspectives of a hell beyond the grave? I do earnestly wish to see the distinction of sex confounded in society, unless where love animates the behavior. <laughs>